Hello, everyone. Not since Dante Alighieri wrote about climbing out of hell towards salvation has there been an escape from purgatory quite like Metroid Dread. And yes, you're right. I'm a lit major. 16 years after being shelled by Nintendo, back when it was being designed as a DS game, we've excitedly waited to see after all these years just how well the latest entry would do, considering that despite how beloved the Metroid franchise is, it's historically struggled when it came to sales. Thus far, it's setting a great pace for itself as the highest grossing Metroid game launch in UK history. But does Metroid Dread fill me with dread? In Metroid Dread, the first 2D installation in quite some time, and the first Metroid game in three console generations, our bounty hunter hero finds herself on the remote planet ZDR after the events of Metroid Fusion stripped her of her abilities and paired up against seven terrifying hacked Emmy robots, which really help rev up the tension as promised in the name. The game takes care to build an environment that makes you feel isolated, alone, and cranks up the sense of urgency. Kind of like running to the bathroom at night over a cold tile floor. As I mentioned before, this is the first new Metroid game in three console generations, so fans have been eager to see how the game would play on a console like the Switch. I think it's aggressively just okay when it's played in handheld mode, but this really does work much better once it's on a TV. It being originally developed for the Nintendo DS, I can't imagine that having been all that pleasant on that device either. Because the controls are so deeply important to how you play in a Metroid game, because memorizing a sequence is integral to boss battles. Well, the controls are smooth, but still, countering feels a beat off. I meant beat off like a timing thing, so stop giggling. While not new to the series by any stretch, the boss battles do take on more frequency and prominence in Metroid Dread. Much has been made about their difficulty, but they all feel designed so discreetly from the overall experience that, with enough attention, they are manageable and fairly fun, although death is pretty much required as you establish the patterns and phases. There are those boss battles that overstay their welcome, as with many enemies in the game, but overall, they were a high point and an indicator that something new was entering your arsenal at the conclusion. Speaking of combat, boy, do the non-boss regular enemies just pummel the ever-living crud out of you. The majority of the combat in the game is exactly what you would expect. Strange things, both airborne and terrestrial, that should be shot. What is curious is how much you need to shoot most of them to make them go away. Visually, it looks odd that a fleshy flying stingray thingamajig takes this many shots to go down. It's once again not a huge hardship, but one more thing that feels like more for its own sake, like truffle oil on fries or another Wes Anderson movie. Much more forethought could put into taking care to include a lot of quality of life adjustments. As this is a Metroid game, an inordinate amount of time will be spent on your map to discern doors and other access points to further your exploration. The map itself is as visually easy to discern as the Paris subway map, which itself looks like it was designed by the French like a hostile riddle for tourists seeking to take yet another photo in which they look like they're holding the Eiffel Tower in their hands. While chromatically sensible, the visual similarity between door types makes a useful quick glance impossible and even closer zoomed in examinations will easily lead you to areas with no current outlet or just the plain wrong direction. As always, there's no attempt by the game to identify nor nudge you in the correct direction. Hours worth of dithering as you flip back and forth from map to game is celebrated by some as honoring the grand legacy of the franchise, but even the simple option to isolate just one type of door would have mitigated the impulse to jump in a time machine and eviscerate Thomas Cook. Because this is going on the internet, this is my reminder that I'm a human person with opinions that might differ from other reviewers out there, and maybe even you at home, because we all consume media differently. <gasps> I understand tradition for the sake of tradition. There's comfort in it. But also, that doesn't always fare well in the long run. Just look at how it worked out for Tevya and Fiddler on the Roof, or dudes that tuck their t-shirts into their jeans under the impression that it's not at all dorky as heck. I love gaming because it bucks storytelling tradition. Many of the elements that we tend to regard as parts of coveted legacy are that way because of initial technical limitations that do not exist in 2021. But once you do arrive at both your and Dread's intended destination, it's possible to still think you shouldn't be there, with the overuse of yet another tired trope of the franchise, the Hidden Passage. 
the most egregious use of this Paleolithic design canard comes at the beginning of the second region of the map. Just as you exit an area, both normal exits lead to rooms that are superheated and you die. Well, my first instinct, because it's a Metroid game, was to return to the previous region and retraverse it for God knows how long, looking for the suit that would allow me to proceed. Lo and behold, if I only shot at the rocky wall in the elevator chamber, I would have found that exit and proceeded on to the next grand exhalation when the game grinds to a complete halt. Of course, I forgot how fun it is because tradition, you know, like that guy pinching your ass every St. Patrick's Day. You know, the most annoying guy in your office every year. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Larry. Although the game does get its hooks in you as you start acquiring more skills and beams. The Emmy sequences, which involve stealth avoidance and an eventual confrontation, provide a distinct, if an unremarkable break from the rest of the game. Similar to the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation or the Nemesis in Resident Evil, they hunt you and take you out upon contact in short order. And while novel for the series, it's a convention that holds little surprises. You get caught, you die, start over. It can prove tense and exciting the first couple of times, but the device quickly wears thin as every sequence plays pretty much the same. As with many things in Dread, it does manage to slow things down to a turgid crawl in a game that isn't too expedient to begin with. And were it excised, it's hard to imagine that one-hit kill stealth sequences would be identified as the element the game needs. Look, it's not that the cumulative effect of these annoyances make the game that onerous in its difficulty, but they sap the game of flow and pleasure with syncopated reliability. It's like having a good meal, but the server swings by to kick you in the nards every 10 minutes. Was the meal really that great at that point? That awesome feeling of getting a new ability and knowing that the itch of those inaccessible regions is going to get scratched can be short-circuited in short order, which sets up a lurching cadence to the gameplay that just falls short. There's a lot to admire in Dread, but I can't say that any of it really amounted to long stretches of pleasure. Even in decidedly challenging games like Souls titles, you know where to go. In Hollow Knight, you have multiple directions to quest and currency to collect for upgrades. Or it lets you know which general direction to go and doesn't de-incentivize going off the path. Metroid is fundamentally a linear game as far as progression goes, but seems to be in denial of its nature by grinding that progression to a crawl with multiple elements that give the impression of a grander game than it actually is. I've made little secret of my strong distaste of utilizing the guise of lore and tradition as a reflexive smokescreen for questionable design decisions and the unquestioning fealty of fanaticism. Just because you dump in your pants on Tuesday and no one made a comment doesn't mean it's a good idea to do it in Temple on the Sabbath as well. I'm not going to publicly question whether someone's like or dislike of a game, or just about anything for that matter, is anything short of sincere. There are genuine lovers of the Metroid franchise, and that fandom is valid. But to hold this series as sacrosanct and delegitimized criticism about the unnecessary, uninspired, and ultimately unsatisfying implementations of ideas from 25 years ago isn't doing anyone any favors here. I have great affection for the Metroid series, but not because it paints by the numbers like it did when developers were still trying to get their heads wrapped around the idea of games being played at home after a single purchase rather than for quarters. I hope that Metroid Prime 4 is actually being made in earnest. I'd love to see the handheld versions available to play on my Switch, but that still doesn't mean I'm going to applaud this installment of the franchise like Grandma Thanksgiving because she didn't go on a three-hour rant about how 5G is giving frogs human ears or how vaccines are hypnotizing her grandkids into hating her. But I am interested in seeing other angles of this because it's one of the best parts of being able to have a nuanced face-to-face -face discussion in that it's not happening on the hellscape that is Twitter. Now, I think it's fair to say, like me in grade school, this opinion is uh, somewhat unpopular. So uh, I really did want to bring in someone who I deeply respect uh, to get uh, a, a, another perspective on Metroid Dread. And that's why I am so happy to welcome my good friend, Gerard. Adam, how are you? I'm good. I'm good because I've, I've, I'm putting this game behind me right now. <laughs> uh, now, not only have you played this game and enjoyed it, you've played this game multiple times, uh, which uh, I, I just... Just to get some context, like how much have you played it? Uh, my first playthrough was 10 hours. My second playthrough was 3 hours and 30 minutes. And my third playthrough was 3 hours and 25 minutes. So I put in, I put in at least 16 hours into the game at this point, 17 hours. 
Wow, wow. Uh, and then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm assuming there's no New Game Plus. I, I, I haven't completely finished this thing, but um, I'm, I'm assuming that for, for you to then pull off another three-hour run, like, things are pretty much where they were before. So how it works is when you beat the game uh, the first time, you unlock hard mode. And, oh, you, okay. and you also unlock the ability to skip all cutscenes and cinematics, um, <laughs> which, which doesn't necessarily uh, optimize your time. But at least if you're replaying it for the value of trying to speedrun it, you can just skip all the way through and just sprint to the end as fast as you can. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's get to the nuts and bolts of this. Um, yeah. So where do you put this in the pantheon of, of, of Metroid games? And, and, and what is it that, it that connects with you so strongly? Oh man, uh, this is where things are gonna get real crazy real quick. This this has if if my nostalgia wasn't as strong as it was for Super Metroid, this would be my my favorite absolute number one top Metroid game of all time. Um, this game is so important to the Metroid community, to the Nintendo fans out there, uh, because Nintendo uh, has treated the Metroid franchise uh, pretty roughly. The fact that you know there's only been um, five to six true Metroid. Uh, main 2D lines versus the probably at this point near 40 to 50 Mario games that exist in the Pantheon, whether he's playing sports or, you know, playing party games. Uh, Metroid really as a franchise has, has kind of been left in the dark. And so Metroid Dread means so much to so many people, including yours truly. Uh, I grew up playing a lot of Super Metroid over and over again. I speedrun it casually on, on my Twitch page. And, uh, you know, to me, this is exactly what the doctor ordered in terms of of difficulty in terms of of exploration and and really tone is the biggest thing this the the dreading the, the dread aspect of the game uh could not be any more higher than it has been in previous uh metroid titles now are are are, are, are you gleaning that sense of dread just from the emmy itself or sort of like greater concerns within the world of of metroid dread i think the emmys are half of it and i think the other half is is the the overarching uh, lore aspect that's kind of baked into Metroid Dread? Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's. I think it's safe to say that um, out of all of the Metroid titles, uh, most of them don't have lore baked into a lot of what you see. I say the Prime series has the most lore written into it from start to finish. Uh, but this being the, the you know a, a solid 2D entry for the Metroid franchise. Uh, as you get closer and closer towards the end, uh, the lore box just opens up and it, it starts to piece together a lot of Samus's history throughout the last six titles. And you you start to kind of see, uh, in essence, what it's like to have everything make sense when otherwise there's no text boxes or, or dialogue or characters that speak in almost most of the Metroid franchise. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that this is the most lore-based out of the Metroid franchise, in my opinion, oh, that, oh. that I'm, that I'm, 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 I'm very aware. Like, you know, it, it would appear the, the internet was designed solely to tell me that I don't like things because of lore. I <laughs> my lack of understanding of it. No, no, no. I've, 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 I've been on, I've, I've, I've had Metroid mansplained to me on Twitter for the past week. <laughs> uh, so, Gerard, I'm, I'm not questioning what you're saying whatsoever, but I, what I do think is interesting is, obviously, yeah, you're right. Nintendo has not shown a ton of love to the Metroid series. And one thing that I don't think I was as keenly aware of is it never really sold that good for something that clearly has a very passionate base. Um, as, and, and when you're talking here about the degree of lore, obviously, you know, the, I don't know if I would ever term the game that difficult insofar as I found it just kind of annoying. Uh, and it, it, it didn't seem to want me to finish it. Uh, but obviously, there are elements of that that are very, very true to, like, Metro going back to the first game on the NES. Um, I mean, do you see this as a game, though, that's actually going to attract a larger audience? It's selling well, but are people playing it? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny because I'm working on my own piece right now, um, which might even be out before this. But either way, uh, something that I talked about deeply in, in that, and I feel is very true, is that as a huge Metroid guy who has played all of them, who's experienced them, who speed runs them, who eats, sleeps, and breathes Metroid, the first thing kept coming into my mind when I was playing it was accessibility is not great for newcomers to the franchise. There's not a lot of explanation of what happened in the previous Metroid titles other than Fusion, which is actually pretty decent considering um, what happens in Fusion. But you look at, you know, if you're someone who's never played a Metroid game at all, it, it holds your hands in some areas, and other hands it says, 
just go and figure it out. And I'm, I'm going to be a little more blunt on this one. I, 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 I think it holds its hands in two instances I can think of very clearly. And most of the other time, it takes kind of a steaming poop in your hand rather than assisting well, well, you. It, it just, I mean, it just, yeah. wait, 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 I mean in, in the beginning of that second area, it's the fact that you have to shoot out a wall to progress because you can't go either way because they're they're, they're super heated. Mm -hmm. um, I myself, I actually know other people where this happened as well. Because it's a Metroid game, I, I'm like, uh, I'm going to go look for a suit that handles heat. Mm -hmm. And spent like another hour and a half, two hours. Um, and, and, and that's been, you know, where, where I really found the stopper with the game is that not so much, oh, I need hand holding. It's that, you know, I need to kind of spend my time wisely. Uh, and I, I just, especially for older people, I, I am one of them. I'll, I'll put a fine point on this. I have fewer years in front of me than I have behind me. Uh, and so, like, spending two of those hours uh, just going, like, I would like to find my heat suit. Um, and I, I guess what I've what I've been hitting on is, I, I, I get the idea that but Metroid has always been like this, and I don't know if that I don't know if that's a good excuse to create an experience that I think is going to be so adverse to the majority of people playing it, or if that's really going to help the franchise in the long run. Well, I, I think it depends on what you're looking to get out of the experience, right? You know, I think a lot of people, they won't, I mean, the internet will make comparisons to be funny and trife about it, but when you do think about the inevitable discussion of Dark Souls, right? Yeah, which in my opinion is the king of not telling you what to do at all. Um, they're just like, go and find cool things. Um, the, the difference between the Dark Souls model and the, and the Metroid model in my eyes is Metroid, there's a wall uh, Dark Souls, there isn't really a wall. It's just explore it and go crazy, and 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 hopefully you'll find progress through that. Um, but I think the 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 subtlety and design of Metroid from the beginning to to now uh, is b baked into veteran players. You know, when I got to the end of a wall, my immediate thought is, oh, there is something here I'm supposed to destroy or break or find. Or if I entered an area that was that was cold or hot, but I wasn't allowed to go in chances are there was a secondary entrance located very closely nearby and i know that because that's years and years and years of playing these games but once again going back to accessibility if you're someone who's never played these games who doesn't know to use the morph bomb or or missiles and walls and, and wave beams to shoot things you're gonna have that issue of oh i must have i must have gone back a certain way and something that i learned more and more as i started to optimize the game and played it more and more was I was starting to understand the design philosophies a bit more clearer just because now, now that I knew what to do, I had to think in the mindset of not only am I sprinting to get into the game under four hours, but how 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 was I gonna do that without knowing the puzzle to the, the solution to the puzzles? Yeah. And and you know, I, it sounds weird, but uh, you learn more about the game after replaying it and, and, and kind of like you said, uh, that's not just something that you're looking to do when there's so many games out there. There's your time is so precious, and I totally understand that. Um, but with regards to what the expectations were when it comes to a Metroid title, um, this is this is par for the course, and then some. And and I think that's why so many Metroid fans are so excited because it's 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 not only doing what it used to do, but it's doing it better, more efficiently. This is and this is, can sound really weird. This is the most accessible Metroid has ever been, and that's saying a lot considering the moments that you've had when you've been stuck in a certain room or or, or stuck in a certain boss, because uh, I guess I'll say it was a lot harder when we were kids. It was a lot harder in other yeah. titles. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're right. I think where I sometimes get frustrated is that we're applauding the game for being contemporary with like 10 to 12 years ago. The franchise seems to be cut such slack when there are Metroidvanias like 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 Ori or, or or even Dark Souls where I don't think you get lost. You just don't, you don't know if it's smart to go in a certain direction. Or even something which I loved like Hollow Knight where you, you really get the sense that you can go in multiple directions and at least improve your character where Metroid is such a linear game and they're employing such archaic sensibilities in the design and allowing you to progress, unless you're so well attuned to exactly that, uh, it's just, it's, it, there's just no pacing. It's, it's like, I get thrilled when I can finally open up a certain type of door, and within just a matter of moments, I'm like, oh, okay, hold on, I'm at another stopper. It, it's like this, 
yes, I'm very, I have strong memories of this being kind of the case a long time ago, but I think I only enjoyed it back then because there was nothing else. I mean, that's actually how games were designed. Sure. I think something that, that people aren't discussing or really thinking about, and, and maybe this is, the, this is something for you to kind of chew on too as we talk about this, is that the term Metroidvania was born out of the chaos of games combining the aspects of progression via Metroid and the explosiveness of expansiveness of, of Castlevania when it came to the Symphony of the Night model. And so when you have a return to form, when a franchise like Metroid, who hasn't made a new game in nearly two decades uh, in, in this same kind of sandbox environment, how does that game's identity stick to what its core is? And I think by making it that difficult, by, by, by making those walls present, it's reminding you that, yes, this is a Metroid title. It's not a Metroidvania-esque title that has kind of taken over the, the landscape of what games are. And not that that deserves a pass, not that that deserves necessarily an easier way to consume it, but what it does do is that it does solidify its choices a little more concretely versus something like Hollow Knight or The Messenger, where those games are so much more, despite, you know, the difficulty and scale for Hollow Knight, uh, those games are so much more accessible for new players to come in, to learn the combat, to to progress. And and Metroid itself, specifically with Metroid Dread, one thing that I had a problem with that I loved, but was, you know, made me realize how difficult Metroid games are. And we get we forget how hard they are, not so much in difficulty of bossing and, and bosses and enemies, but just in overall how to play in, in the skill it takes to play, is by the time you're done playing and you have every every power up, every asset, everything. You're using every single button on the Switch Joy-Cons and Pro Controller in, in conjunction and simply changing the button format on how you're holding it changes the game entirely and how, and to how Samus functions. And so to me, this, this is a game that's just not apologizing for what it is, but it's sticking a flag in the ground and going, hey, we started this revolution. This is our genre. This is our, our standpoint. And we're going to stick to our own identity. And I, I, I applaud and respect that stance. At the same time, I don't think that if you've ever played a, if you've never played a Metroid game before, this is going to be a rough experience. This game has paved the way or, for, for or, so many or people. Or you can just not play and make it be oh. known to Nintendo that it's not worth your time. I, I mean, <laughs> Which is kind of... <laughs> yeah, you, you could also not see The Godfather. You could also not see The Matrix. But no, like... See, I mean, I still... I, I, I guess the thing is I just can't see Metroid Dread on that level. I mean, I... I, I I, I, I guess the thing is, and what you described, I get it. Obviously, you know where I feel about Get Good. Sure. Uh, is is that it's just it's so regressive. It's like sure. oh god, it shouldn't change because this is what it was. I, it's almost like its refusal to change. Uh, I mean, I I, I I I guess on one level that obstinance is is kind of like you've got to admire it from a distance, but that doesn't mean it's something I want to play or if it was a person. It's something I would want to spend any time with. Personally. I, I, I mean, I see exactly where you're coming from, Adam, and 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 I, I disagree in the, how extreme it can be, but at the same time, there is this essence of of frustration, right? I mean, I think, you know, I, I on Twitter, especially in the discourse of Metroid Dread, I keep seeing the conversation of I like smaller games, I like games that are cheaper, that that are 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 less about the length and more about getting to the end and feeling accomplished and, and experiencing the game has to offer in a shorter time span than it would be to play the game for 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 hours. And it's definitely, you know, there is a reason why Metroid Dread was twi was trending on Twitter because the game was $60 and there was that meme of Metroid $60 versus uh, The Witcher 3, which is $60 and also, you know, 100, yeah, 200 yeah. plus hours, right? Um, there is a discourse definitely baked into that, but... Um, you know, I, I think I think uh, we have to give flowers at some point to what Metro. You know, give 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 the flowers when the franchise is alive, right? Because once again, this this title 19, 19 years since Metroid Fusion. And, yeah, and I, I it could have used twenty in my book. I mean, I I, I guess the part that just yeah, I, I philosophically I'm never going to. I mean, I want more Metro games. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I, re I mean, I, I don't believe Metroid Prime 4 is actually in development, but I really, really want to play it. Uh, but, I mean, it's just, I mean, obviously for, for diehard fans, this is a good game. But, I, or, yeah. 
Yeah, but I, th- I think for, for something that wants to foster kind of a resurgence of Metroid, it's just not there. And like, obviously, I'm just not comfortable saying good things about something, obviously, that is good to me. So. Well, and that's, <laughs> and that's the whole point of this discourse, right? The whole point is to have yeah. a conversation of, of, of that. And, and, and that's why I think everyone respects you so much is like, you're going to have your viewpoint and then people are going to look at mine and go, that's what I more identify with. And that's the, that's the whole point of the conversation online. And that's, what, that's, what, that's, what's beautiful about it. It's, it's a beautiful disaster of, of different opinions. And I think as long as we can have these conversations, then I, I think, I think there's room for all of it. Not, not you by any stretch of the imagination, because I've got a much better insight in the course of this discussion than any, I mean, obviously don't go online and have a discussion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, Metroid fans and the way that they express it, I mean, it's like the top level of gatekeeping. Like, I thought it was Dark Souls. I forgot just exactly what, you know, sort of that fandom can do. And I guess I guess the only bummer is, is that I don't think that they're doing themselves any favors in the nature of the discourse, not the, like, I'm sorry, the manner, not, not the substance of it. Uh, that, well, if you only knew X, you know this was great. Um, is it? It's, it's 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 something of a tough argument. I mean, it's obviously you, you hear the same thing in science fiction and uh, a, 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 a lot of nerd genres, comic books, with 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 without a doubt. But uh, those always seem to run contrary to commercial success and longevity. I I, I think that's where my primary concern is uh, in both the game itself and sort of. Uh, how a, v- a very vocal group of people around it um, have been expressing it. Once again, not you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it's hard for me to, to to take a stance because a lot of people online think that I'm at the at the payroll and call of Nintendo, given Ugh. my 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 passion and, and intensity for their franchise. That's okay. Uh, I, 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 one, once upon a time, I was accused of having Mario living up my ass. <laughs> uh, obviously. Apparently, you know, like uh, Phil, Phil Spencer and I dying with each other naked all the time. Sure. And I, I think once I was accused of being a Sony fanboy. Sure. Uh, but I, 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 th- I think that guy was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think I think it's important to recognize though that uh, I think the reason why so many people are so charged about this is because um, they look at people like you and myself and, and the and the stances that we take and and they and and there's a genuine fear to it and it's true because I've seen it over the years that depending on your certain outlet your certain influencer your certain celebrity if they say I don't like this game um, people unabashedly sometimes listen to that feedback and go oh that means this game is bad and that all games in the franchise must be bad and so there's a certain level of, of uh, respect and, and, and fear of power, right? That if I say a game is bad, then suddenly my audience or your audience or the G4 audience is going to go, not, nah, don't pick up Dread. Dread's bad. Don't pick it up because they said it's bad and, and, and it impacts sales. And I think that's what people get so charged because there are some people out yeah. there who love this experience, who love exactly what they're getting, who are so excited about it because it, it's it's a return to form. It's an improve on form if you've been plugged into the Metroid uh, franchise for the last you know several years. And I think that's where a lot of that hedonist comes from. And I and and I and I think it's important to recognize the differences between the two because that's why I love this franchise. I love how difficult it is. I love how how it makes me have to think so difficult you know so much more outside of the box than i normally would and that's because i grew up playing metroid the way that it's been right it's the tools and the toys that i've known to use um but if you aren't familiar with it it's a different experience and how and that's that's again i i have to go back to game identity right you have to stick your your flag in the ground and say this is what this is and if people don't get it, people don't get it. And if they don't like it, that's okay. And we have to have. Oh yeah, that, no, no, okay that, that that is yes. It's it's like just yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely. Right. I'm never gonna fault someone for saying I like something or question their their mindset. I think that's why when I say I don't like something, it's like well, if you listen to the Lord. It's like, yeah, I still don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and opinions are um, opinions. It's, it's like yeah, we exactly. Have, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gerard, well, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, you have definitely illuminated it. I do not think this is the last game that you and I are going to see very, very differently on. Uh, and I can say with all, all honesty, I'm actually really looking forward to that because uh, I, I love alternate opinions, uh, and especially yours. So, thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to to get into this discourse once again about a game that you and I both love and hate. <laughs> 
there you have it. There's a good reason that Metroid holds a prominent place in the collective minds of players. It's half of Metroidvania, the side-scrolling experience that emphasizes exploration and backtracking in curious environments as you gain new abilities to further expand your exploration. It's the epitome of a virtuous cycle in game design. When Dread hits these marks, the magic is there. I can finally do that thing and hopefully get that thing! And had this tradition been the primary focus in the game, and every design choice in its service, it would be the game I've yearned for. But sadly, in a disappointing, collect-them-all pursuit of misplaced nostalgia massaging, many creaky and tired elements that are present in older Metroids are celebrated and peppered through like so many typos on an internet rant. While it has and will still continue to elicit squeals of glee from devotees who thrive on franchise, it's tough to think this 14 years late installment will make the case for them. A while back, I made a deal with the genie to bring back G4, and now I have to read a listicle once a day or I get turned into a spider monkey. So here goes with my daily list of things. This is the top five things you deserve to know before you play Metroid Dread. You deserve it, thirst quenched by Dr. Pepper. Number one, Metroid Dread is the conclusion to Metroid's 2D timeline. The Metroid series has a non-linear timeline, which is a nice way of saying it's pretty confusing. Look at Other M just hanging out on his own continuity. Dread's story is a direct sequel to 2002's Metroid Fusion. Despite six other Metroid games coming out in the 19-year gap between the two titles, and is the wrap-up of the 2D Metroid saga, which began all the way back in 1986. Number 2. Metroid Dread was developed by Mercury Steam, the studio best known for the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series, which is often underrated despite having Patrick Stewart as the voice of death and some pretty out there vampire design. Thankfully, they went a different direction with Samus's armor. Number 3. Metroid Dread is best when played with a Pro Controller. Like all Nintendo Switch games, Dread is fully playable on the go. But for some of the more challenging boss fights, you may find yourself docking and reaching for a Pro Controller. Particularly, given the game's reliance on timing and parry mechanics, piloting Samus with a less ergonomic mobile setup can result in rage throwing your Switch down the center aisle of a subway car. Not that that happened on my recent commute. No. Number 4. A Metroid movie is not officially in development. Even though the rights have been optioned since 2003 and stars like Brie Larson have expressed interest in playing Samus, there is no official Metroid movie in development. I'm sorry, that fake movie trailer on YouTube is still fake. And finally, Metroid Dread is putting a bow on the 2D storyline, but Metroid Prime 4 is still in development. Prime takes place in an entirely different Metroid universe, so that side of the franchise is still wide open. Here's hoping Nintendo treats fans with more than a floating number four next time round. And don't forget to treat yourself to an ice-cold Dr. Pepper. There you go. I've satisfied the genie. If Metroid Dread was what you were waiting for, let us know in the comments below. And if you need to explain lore to me, do it in large block paragraph form with a few uh, capitalizations. That way I'll know and pass right over it. Don't forget to like and do the subscribing and all of that. But also, check out Gerard, who clearly loves Metroid and I love him for it. He's talking about the secretish history of Metroid. You probably don't want me to talk about Metroid ever again, so check me talking about the secretish history of Silent Hill. Alright, take care, and please come back.